go. Uh, I've got to go hang out at Invent Iowa, where young Charles Harding will be presenting the glove coat today. That is adorable. Over at the IMU. So, gosh darn it, proud of that kid. No more chapter wrists. If the hood is already the hat integrated into the coat, then that's what this is. But for the hands, wow. yep, it's pretty genius. All Get right, them over your head. Okay, and then put them out, put them out, put them out, put them out. Okay, cool. And so, okay, so we can see how Kyle's able to vary his rate of rotation by changing his moment of inertia. Get them over your head. Okay, and then put them out, put them out, put them out, put them out. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so. And I was going to ask, like, what does this kind of recall for you? And so figure skating, yeah. you've done some figure skating in the past? No, but no. I've watched some. Okay, you've watched some figure skating, right? They do that thing. Um, so let's pop down here. Oh, I thought I had this. I do have it. It's up here. Harding. There we go. Figure skater. Physics videos. Circular motion. All right. Um, there it is. Figure skater. All right. So she's got some rotation, but then she brings in that big heavy skate. Whoa! 308 RPMs there at her peak. She didn't do 308 RPMs, but that was her peak angular velocity. We'll watch that again. Pretty ridiculous. So she spins slowly with that big heavy skate out to the side, and then she brings it in towards the axis. In the higher res version, you can actually see spit flying out of her mouth. It's pretty gross. Um, but what we're dealing with here is, um, you know, we have all these linear and angular things. So the linear version of this, ah, oh, come on, pen. <clears throat> The linear version of this is P equals M V, momentum equals mass times velocity. And so the angular or rotational version of this is L equals I omega, okay? Um, I is the rotational or the moment of inertia, and omega is the angular velocity. So... When Cal puts the masses far from the axis of rotation, it's going to make the angular velocity very small. When he puts the masses over his head, it's going to decrease the moment of inertia. That's going to make the angular velocity very big. Same thing that the skater is doing there. Um, and again, I, you would have to consult the chart for that. But for a point mass, it's going to be m r squared. And if we go m r r omega, well, r omega is the tangential velocity. Okay, so that's another useful representation of this. For a point mass, the angular momentum is MERV. Okay, it's the MERV or MERVL. It's a bit of a MERVL. No, no, Marvel. okay, MARVL. No, there's no way it's MERVL. Okay. Um, so here's some weird things about it, and I should have filmed this, uh, but you'll just have to narrate out loud um, for the, the people watching at home. Um, I could pause it and we can go film the video. Should we do it? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. Let me, let me, can I pause this? Is there a way to pause oh, this? Yeah. Let's try it. Pause. Pause. There, there you go. Yes. All right. Um, so we added in a couple more videos here quick to get at a couple of ideas. Um, this is a situation where his angular momentum right now is zero. So he's going to throw this ball. Bernardo's going to catch it. All right. So both cow and the ball are at rest. They have no <laughs> angular velocity. So they have no angular momentum here. In the end, that system should still have a total angular momentum of zero, provided their only interaction is with each other. Do it. What's his... Angular momentum now. And so if we think about the direction that he's rotating, okay, use your right hand rule, his angular velocity is directed into the floor. So that would be a negative angular velocity. So somehow 
we would have to be able to to define the angular velocity of the bowling ball here, even though it's going in a straight line, um, and it has to be positive. So, ooh, what's going on with all this jazz? Here we are. We're in the right spot. So, here's cow. And he's spinning like that. So if I if I do my right hand rule, I've got his angular velocity is directed down. Okay, so that would also be the direction of his angular momentum. His angular momentum is negative. The ball we have to be able to find its moment of, or sorry, its angular momentum is positive. And so if we take an overhead view, okay, a top view of what's going on, this is cow from above uh he's spinning think about that he's i don't know if you've noticed he's got a little bit of a balding problem but um so he's rotating like that right that would be a negative direction rotation that's how he's got that negular negular negative angular momentum i just contracted some words there the ball he's throwing it from over here okay here's his arms reaching out and throwing it and the ball is moving like that, okay? Uh, how we define the sign of its angular velocity is we've got to extend a, a line out over here, okay? From the axis, this is the axis, to a line that's, uh, what's the word here, Quinn? Normal to the, the line of flight for the ball, okay? So if you consider... This dashed line, I should do it in a different color. The red dashed line, red dashed line. It's kind of the line of motion of the ball. And that blue dashed line is the, the radius, okay? So to get the angular momentum of that ball, the ball's gonna act like a point particle. There's R, and I would take M, V, R here. And that would tell me the angular momentum for the ball, okay? And if you think about it, if you right hand rule this, that's kind of like a particle that's going around as viewed from this direction counterclockwise. And if you curl your fingers to follow that, your thumb would point up. So that's how the ball ends up with an angular momentum that has the opposite sign of cow's angular momentum. Okay. Um, and we have kind of a similar thing going on in the second video or fourth video, as it were. Where's the one? Ah, oh, come on, load. Darn you. So in the second one, Cow isn't holding the ball. Bernardo's got the ball. And let's see if this is going to work here. Why didn't you pop out? Pop out. So Cow's got an initial right. angular. So without swearing, so Cow's uh, got an angular momentum of. <laughs> Quiet, Mr. Harding. So Cal's got an angular velocity, an angular momentum right now of zero. Bernardo's going to throw this ball at him. And then after Cal catches it, now he's rotating. And again, right hand rule that. And your thumb's going to point down. So now he's got, in the end, a final negative angular momentum. Uh, and that tells us something about the initial angular momentum of the ball. The ball was not going in a circle initially, Mr. Harding, I know. But we have to be able to explain how all of a sudden in the end, cow's got negative angular momentum. So in the end, cow's spinning like that. Uh, so again, we consider the ball. Bernardo tosses it as viewed from above. It's kind of moving like that. That would be its velocity. And again, I want to go to the axis. And I'm going to draw a normal line over. That's fancy pants for perpendicular. I've got to draw a line that connects the axis. I've got to draw a line that connects the axis to the line of the velocity. Okay. And so if I had that, maybe, you know, if I had the velocity back here, that's why I'm saying I got to extend that line out to think about where that normal is. So now this defines R and the ball has some velocity V and some mass M. So again, L initial for the ball, L ball. I, we would find that by taking M times V times R. And then in the end, uh, the final angular momentum is going to be L ball F plus L 
cow f and it's got to equal what we had before in terms of a numerical total. Cow pulled it in really tight to the axis of rotation, so you can see that's why it was spinning fast there. But that's just a couple of thoughts about how you go about applying this idea of conservation of angular momentum, okay? Um, again, the figure skater is a good illustration of that, okay? There's probably some other, you know, any kind of rotational realm is going to have some kind of version of this uh, going on with it. By, by varying the moment of inertia, you can control the angular velocity, okay? So I'm going to shut up with that um, after I refer you back up to the top here. Because again, this is another, this is kind of the main general form of the equation. And you've got to look up your moment of inertia or moment of inertias from the chart. So you know what to put in for I. Omega is the angular velocity in radians per second. All right, now I'm done talking.